Glenn, obviously a stellar professional career behind you, but nowadays you're dabbling in a bit of production car racing with Bob Pearson. You've been doing this for a little while, obviously enjoying yourself. Yeah, I do enjoy, particularly getting into the Evos, they're quite a fun car to drive. Um, they're quite nimble and, and um, quite well balanced, and they've got lots of traction being a four-wheel drive car, so that sort of enticed me into wanting to have a run in this class, and also the class potential-wise can be very, very successful because it sort of brings us back to the, the basis of where motorsport started in Australia with the GDHOs and, and the uh, Monaros back in them days and all that, which is a production car style of racing. And um, and uh, that's that's what the sport needs also, to get back to the, a bit more of a, a base of a production car. And, and there's lots of good models and cars coming out through the manufacturers these days that, that can put on a pretty good show, I think. And, and to be a part of that at the moment is... is been very rewarding because um, we've had some great success at the start of the year. Um, Eastern Creek was a bit tougher for us but uh, this weekend so far it's looking pretty positive. Now we don't see you hanging around the V8 Supercar paddock anymore like some of your old colleagues but you are pretty busy in the motorsport industry. Just tell us a bit about your son Aaron who's racing karts and other things you've been doing in Speedway and the like. Yeah, uh, naturally my son's uh, 15 now and he started karts at the age of 7 so we've done a fair bit of touring around with the karting um, in that in that uh, basically seven to eight years and um, and naturally also involved in speedway in a little way in, in, not as a driver but in technical side of it with the suspension shock absorbers built quite a few shock absorbers through the speedway game um, and it got introduced through a friend of mine who was racing speedway probably about five or six years ago and, and about three years ago I actually went to America with him to do um, dirt lake models over there for, for two weeks so I enjoy that side of it. It's technically very challenging because the, the track changes every single race you go out there so you've got to really think of what setup changes you make between race to race by look, just looking at the track surface where this style of racing uh, the track surface never changes and um, you really know what you've got every race you go out and you make very little changes so that technically challenges me and that's the side of it I really like um, and I've always liked throughout all my motor racing career naturally owning my own race team and doing my own car engineering and all my own setups. That sort of side of the motorsport I really enjoyed and um, I still do a fair bit of that today. Do you still keep an eye on V8 supercars at all? Obviously as a guy who drove for factory Nissan, Ford and Holden teams, must have pricked your interest up a little bit this year. Oh yeah, for sure. No doubt I, I do um, still watch it and still interested in what's going on because naturally it's been my livelihood over my whole career and 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 what I've been brought up as a child in motorsport because my dad raced cars and that's all I really knew. I well, still know. Um, I'm still involved in the development series side of it with a young kid or young kids in there trying to bring them through and give them a bit of my experience that I've learned over the years. So no, it's not that I'm not not still being a part of supercars. It's just I'm not there um, publicly in the limelight and, um, and and being there at every race meeting. I just sort of focus more on what I can do to help and, um, and that sometimes brings me to races and sometimes it doesn't. So looking back at your own career, obviously we just mentioned your, your Nissan time which must have been enjoyable. Was, was it a bit of a risk then to go out on your own? Obviously you had a lot of success with Glen Seaton Racing but it was a big call. Yeah there's no doubt about that and actually the Nissan side of it gave me my start of my professional career um, um, and I very much enjoyed that because um, that was the start of Group A, um, <clears throat> and that was uh, all new cars, all new teams, basically to a degree. Um, naturally, that brought in a lot more international race cars um, because we went away from the Group C, which was just Ford and Holden, basically, um, to being international based cars as well BMWs, Nissans, um, also Sierras. Um, we've seen so many makes of Volvos, um, seen so many makes over that time. So, that was a great, enjoyable part of the start of my career. Was it risky going on my own? You'd probably look look on it back then and you'd probably say, yeah, maybe it was. But I looked at it based on, I wanted to own my own race team. I wanted to rule my, being able to control my destiny of where I went in the sport. Um, and looking back on now with the results I had, and I won two championships um, with my own team, and the results that we had, I'd say uh, I'd do it again tomorrow. So, um, no, looking back on it, it wasn't a risk. But at the time, you probably could have said it was a risk, yes. And then at the other end of it, obviously for a company like ProDrive to come along and offer to buy the team and keep you in a ride, was that the right time? Did that work out how it should? Um, yeah, it did actually because um, it was sort of getting to a point where the sport financially was, was becoming very expensive to be competitive and I could sort of see that 
that um, the, the money wasn't probably around to be able to be more competitive than I wanted to be and the opportunity came along where like I say ProDrive approached me to, to buy my race team um, and it was about it was exactly about the right time to, to me wanting to get out of ownership driving running a race team and that because I, it was at the time when it was very difficult as a, as a driver owner to be able to be competitive because you, you, you need to spend so much more time in training keeping yourself fit and also just focusing on your driving side of it and I couldn't do that um, at that sort of time so I just um, I, I thought there was a great opportunity to, to sell to um, pro drive at the time and looking back on it now it was I uh, had a great two years with them uh, learn a hell of a lot in those two years naturally and they did too because it was really the start up of a new team and, and such a big team because it was three cars the first year of myself Craig Lowndes and David Besnard and, and looking back on it that was probably too much of an ask for that team to do I should have probably focused on just two cars um, but yeah now I, I look back on it and say uh, it was the right decision Obviously, through those years, you had so many good times with Ford. At the end there, where you were still an endurance co-driver, they probably didn't support you the way some of the fans probably wanted them to. How do you look at where they are now in potentially not being involved next year? Is that a sad thing for the sport? It's a huge sad thing for the sport because this sport was grown on Ford versus Holden. And to not see Ford out there in a factory-supported way would be sad for the sport and, and detrimental to the sport, I think, as in supercars. because. Like I say, it has been built on, on Ford vs Hull. Um, I suppose I don't know the, the nuts and bolts behind the scenes of what why Ford can't be a part of it and maybe it is financially that that uh, they've had to pull pull back on it. And, and like, let's face it, the world has got pretty tough in the last five or six years because of the financial crisis and, and companies are really struggling. So, But um, it would be sad to see them go for sure because they've been involved in motorsport for so long and particularly in our form of touring car come supercars in Australia for so long and we'd be sad to see them go.